NASA has nothing over Professor Spark. Just take a look at this place. It's here that the professor conducts all his top secret astronomical experiments, way ahead of his time, of course. Hey, did you know that the professor landed a rocket ship on the moon years before Neil Armstrong ever set foot on it? <laughs> Just kidding. The scary thing is, if Paula used this room, she could send one of the mission crews anywhere in the universe. Well, no one's ever accused me of making things easy, Snorley. So I'm not about to start now. Well, there's no mission clue here, but if you want, there's a pack of invention points available. But it's not in this room. In fact, it's not even in this solar system, because I used one of Daddy's rockets to ship it into deep space. Special delivery. You won't find it by just looking around the void. You'll have to figure out exactly where to look. How do we do that, Polly? Space is a big place. Well, just because I'm such a nice girl, I'll give you a teeny weeny hint. There you go. I just sent the hint flying off toward the new black hole Daddy recently discovered. If you really work fast, you might rescue the hint before it gets sucked up into another dimension. Then again, maybe you'll fail. Scary, huh? Don't worry, we might have a chance. Professor Spark recently launched a whole series of space probes into the black hole. I think we can use it to intercept Polly's radio transmission. Just click on the telescope and we'll get started. Is this cool or what? One minute we're in Professor Spark's observatory, and the next we're looking into space 300,000 light years away at a humongous black hole. See that? That was Polly's radio transmission, and the radio wave circling inside the black hole is part of Polly's hint. Unless you blast it out of there, it's going to get sucked into a different dimension. That's one of Professor Spark's space pulls. Don't worry, it's strong enough to resist the intense gravitational pull of the black hole, and it packs laser beams powerful enough to knock Polly's radio transmission to safety. You can actually spin the ship by using the arrow keys on your keyboard. To shoot the ship's laser beam, press the spacebar on your keyboard. Whenever you hit a radio transmission packet head-on, you'll knock it one light year away from the center of the black hole. When you collect four radio packets, you've got Polly's entire hint ready for unscrambling. Okay, you have four spaceships ready to help you. Each one has a limited amount of laser energy, so shoot only when you really think it'll help. Now, go to it! Asteroid bites the dust. Hey, shoot! You got a radio packet. Wait, you got another radio wave packet. Wait a minute! You got another radio wave packet. Asteroid bites the dust. That asteroid is obliterated! Another asteroid bites the dust. That's it! Now it's time to decode Polly's message. This is the professor's alien transmission decoding device. It comes in handy when it comes to decoding transmissions from extraterrestrial beings. The catch is, he hasn't yet found any alien transmissions to decode. Still, we can use it to read Polly's hint. I guess you can call that an alien transmission. Here comes the radio transmission you intercepted from the grip of the black hole. <laughs> What a drag. Polly's hint is all scrambled. The words aren't in the right order. Polly's not an alien, technically, but we can still use the professor's alien decoder to unscramble her hint. What you need to do is rearrange the words so they create a sentence that makes sense. You know, 
A subject is usually followed by a verb and all that stuff you learned at school. Huh, I can't tell a pronoun from a protozoan, but I do know that every sentence begins with a capital letter and ends with some kind of punctuation mark, a period, a question mark, or an exclamation point. Unscramble all the sentences, and we can go to the professor's star chart and figure out where Polly sent that spaceship. Good luck! Hey, you made quick sense out of that messy sentence. But wait, there's more to be done. Hey, you made quick sense out of that messy sentence. Not done yet. There's more to figure out. Hey, you made quick sense out of that messy sentence. But wait, there's more to be done. Way to go! You nailed the code! I made the days longer than the nights. I made flowers grow tall and days grow warm. How did I do all these things? I brought spring to ancient people. Okay, you unscrambled a hint. Quick, to the star chart so we can find those invention points. This is the professor's star chart. It's really like a map that shows the locations of all the billions of stars that we can see from Earth. Of course, there are billions more we can't see. In the old days, people used to navigate by the stars. This map would have come in handy then. Move the pointer over any of the constellations to find out their names. If you want to know more about one of the constellations, just click on it. Centaurus is named after the mythical beast called centaurs. Centaurs were savage creatures that were men from the waist up, but horses from the waist down. Carina represents the keel of Jason's ship, the Argo. Aquarius means water bearer in Latin. The swan who flies because through the night sky. Draco is the dragon who guarded the golden apples of Hera, queen of the Greek gods. Arena represents the keel. Vela is the sails of Jason's ship. The wind of Pupus represents the stern or back. Centaurus is ago, a family of planets began to circle the sun. Right on target! Here comes the spaceship! Sit down! Alright, put those invention points into the inventory. Then let's get back on track with our mission.